All right. Well, welcome everybody to uh, the Pi Day. I should have had a Pi question, of course. Yeah. Um, but Apple. Uh, yeah, I don't like any Pi, strangely enough. Um, welcome to the metrics model meeting. We have a few things on the agenda today. Um, but the question for today is if you have a favorite sport that you like to watch. Not necessarily play, but watch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so as a, I have a son who's a swimmer. It's not the most exciting sport to watch sometimes, <laughs> but. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't believe that. You have to go back and forth. <laughs> Especially they on, do like, it a month, real fast. Um, what's that? They do it real fast. We do it real fast. Yeah. Daniel, I'm with you, tennis. I like the tennis season, right. kind of the Wimbledon French US Open, you know, the summer, the summer. You summer play tour. do you play tennis? I do play tennis. Okay, so next but, time we play tennis. I'm really well, bad at playing tennis. I am I, it's been a while since I've played, but yes, I do play tennis. Um and for those of you that don't know, Spain is uh quite good at at producing tennis players. <laughs> <laughs> I've observed that over the years. Yeah, they're really good at at card magic and tennis players. That's not the first time to know that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know why that is with Spain, but it's true. So, all right. Um, okay, so I think you know we have a couple of guests today, or people who we hope would continue to join. But um, some updates on ISO discussions, and I will just turn it over to whomever would like to lead that because that was added to the agenda. I saw in Slack, I think that might be you, Yahui. No, yeah, Yahui, do you want to this part? Okay, yeah, yeah. so. Uh, anybody. That's yeah, okay. please. Yeah, please. Okay, so it's my turn. Yeah, you, you can okay. introduce the progress and your, pro your proposal. Yeah, please. Okay, so first of all, hello, everybody. This is Minghui Zhou from Peking University, China. It's uh, quite late, you know, 11 o'clock at light. Hello, Sean. Hello, Daniel. Hey, nice hey, to you meet you guys. again. Hello. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll try to make it quick, okay? I want yeah. to get to bed before 12. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. So, I'm going to share my screen. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Let yeah. me know if you. Yep. You can do yeah, that. Yeah. 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 I. I think today I'm going to just. Uh, uh give a little bit uh, explanation about uh, the extensive literature review we conducted in order to provide the framework for the health evaluation of open source software project, okay? So I'm going to share. Yes, we see it. Okay, it's awesome. So measuring health of open source software project yeah, before I start, I would like to introduce two of my PhD students. Can we do that? Yeah, for sure. Let's let's meet okay, them. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, they just started as a PhD. So they are new be in the community and I would expect them to make the fresh contributions. Okay, Rui Qiao, could you two introduce a little bit about yourselves? So we can get started. Um, hello, everyone. Could you hear me? Yes. Yep. Oh, that's good. Uh, my name is Rachel Chiu, and uh, uh, I'm in the first year of my um, PhD, and my advisor is Minghui Zhou. Nice to meet you. Yep. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Hello. I think we good. have somebody else. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Oh, good, good morning or good, good evening. I'm Wen Hao Yang. 
uh, from Peking University. I'm on my first year of my PhD, advised by Professor Minghui Zhou. Yeah, uh, we have met before. Uh, hi, Daniel. Hi, Xing. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Good to see you again. So, Matt, you need to pay a visit to Beijing. I yeah. hear that's the yeah. that's... when you get a chance. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, mm -hmm. so measuring health of open source software project. Hmm. Uh, wait a second. I see. Yeah. I see it just fine. Yeah, okay. I see it. No I'll problem. try to do this, okay? So yeah, because yeah. my yeah. operating system is Ubuntu, it's a lot as good as Windows or Apple, as you can imagine. But uh, I am an open source guy. Okay, so we <laughs> have try. seen Windows a lot of uh, yeah requirements related to the evaluation about the health of open source software. I think for this community, this is very lateral and the requirements are very obvious. Why this lead to evaluate the health of open source software project? It's critical. So uh, once we can evaluate open source software project, we can take actions. So whenever we go, there are some requirements. There are some questions. How should I evaluate my community and my code so I can take protections, take actions in order to reduce the risks? On the other hand, actually, we can see questions like which project I can invest. That's quite an interesting question too because open source software attracts a lot of attention. There are many investors, they want to evaluate the open source software. They may make investment to those projects. So this is background. And uh, I hope the background is the same for all people here in this zone. Okay, so, it's important. So, any question? You're okay, good. You're below. You're not yet. No yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead. So, once we decide it's important to evaluate open source software project, then the question is what uh, to look your friends come and here and what hi. indicates good or bad. We in the past, we have conducted extensive studies on open source software related to community, ecosystem, software, supply chain. And we build metrics derived from data to look at the phenomenon of open source software. In any case, here, I want to say our goal is to design a framework to evaluate health of open source software projects. So in the industry, mm -hmm, we can see a lot of techniques are proposed. So they have certain practical requirements. As I just introduced, there is also a market value there. And the many of the metrics are based on the experiences of the managers and the developers. So a couple of days ago, we have uh, we had uh, visitors from Huawei, not the same branch as Yehui. Anyway, my point is the managers, the project managers, the branch managers, from the industry, they have intense requirements and experiences related to software measurement and even open source software measurement. There is an overlap between open source software and closed software. 
but uh, there is also a difference. And on the other hand, as uh, academia, we look at the problem from a much more scientific perspective. I would say it's more theory, theoretical and that we often have a innovative taste for the open source software research. Anyway, so I think in this community, we can also understand that there is a universal consensus from the perspective of international standard. For example, the software quality, there is also, there is already a established standard. So this is the framework we see we can dive deeper to look at uh, or to establish the measurement framework. So even though we have conducted extensive studies on open source software measurement, but in order to make the framework more systematic, we conducted a literature review. I think just uh, in recent week, the work is still in the process. So I show you the picture about how we conducted the literature review. So we look at uh, the digital library of IEEE and uh, ACM. So we came up with quite a few keywords to explore the literature. And uh, ourselves also have quite a few papers on this area. I'm not going to get into many details. I just wanted to show you the methodology we used to look at the landscape. The attempt, what we had in mind is we wanted to collect as many as possible papers related to this area. So, so far, this is the aspects we see we can group on this area, community, software, and value. If you have better perspectives or more angles to look at uh, this problem, just uh, let me know. So community, software, and value. So what is community? Well, for open source software, two elements are most important, software and the people who develop and maintain the software. And beyond that, there is a value perspective from the production because people develop software and there is a product and there is value to look at the product. So that's the three most important elements. We look at uh, the measurement framework. And there are also some aspects. For example, what is the community? Uh, which aspects to look at as a community? Which aspects to look at as a software? which expects to look at the value. So far, we just got very brief ideas in terms of which expects we should look and uh, what indicates good or bad, I think it still requires further exploration. And there are still many papers waiting for us to look deeper. So that would be a very brief introduction about the work we did so far. Three aspects, community, software, value. And uh, yeah, 
some aspects to look at uh, community software and value. And then we try to establish a consistent and try to cover everything important related to the evaluation of the open source software. Okay, guys, that would be all. Thank you. This is great. Thank you. Thank you very much <laughs> for your presentation. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I have a few questions, maybe just sure. I'll start with one. Um, so you talk about um, like good or bad or better or worse. So that's, and in open source, um, those propositions can be a little tricky sometimes because every community is a little bit different. So for example, if I look at say slide six, if you go there, the community slide, things like individual activity in one community may look very different than individual activity in a different community, and they both might be good for that community. I, I understand your point. Let me yeah. ask you this question. Sure. What's the point for you to evaluate an open source software? Yeah, I mean, so this is, it's good. So there's, we struggle with this question because yeah. um, on one end of, of the spectrum, we don't want to just say, here are the metrics, you figure it out, you meaning the community. But at the other end of the spectrum, we don't want to say that this level of activity is bad. It's hard for us sure. to, to provide that judgment. And so there I has totally to be... understand. Yeah. yeah, I understand that it needs to be neutral. Yeah, yeah. yeah so there's no think... emotion, no judgment. Yeah, I understand for... that. Yeah, so that I think I mean I'm not criticizing this at all. It's just we have to find if we're gonna do some sort of of judgment somewhere in there, like either either no judgment or full judgment. Like finding that balance is tricky, and I appreciate that conversation. Uh, I think the point is uh, you need to show like the the degree, okay? Your body mm -hmm. degree. It's neutral, no judgment. Yes. But if your degree is high, well, it indicates your body may have problem. I mean, otherwise, why it's important that you measure your degree when oh, I, you I, feel- I agree. Yeah. I agree. And I, I think you're, by saying you may have a problem is kind of the way to present it, because you may not. Mm -hmm. But if, if you're mm -hmm. seeing, if you're seeing this degree of, or this lack of activity, in this, mm -hmm. if I was to look at this, this may be a problem, and here's how you might go about investigating that problem further. But that's I. So I think we're on the same. I, I think we agree with each other. So that's that's good. Okay, that was my comment. Um, Understood others? totally. Uh -huh. Yeah. But uh, you you ought to show the value. <laughs> yes, you I agree. You need to tell. I mean, otherwise there are so many arguments. So what? Yes, I agree. <laughs> I totally agree. So, uh, yeah, Daniel. Yeah, uh, quick, quick comment here, and thank you, thank you for the for the intro. Um, so, my, my experience when we've been analyzing projects, uh, either open source or or internally in corporations, is that <clears throat> the complexity of each of the projects are so different sometimes. Complexity, maturity, or even the processes or the tools that it's really hard to compare them. So. Back in time, like 10, 12 years ago, while I was involved with one of these uh, European funded projects, our, our conclusion here was, okay, you can, you can have in, you know, according to a metric or a KPI, you will have probably most of the projects around certain average or median, but then you have outliers. We try to avoid consistently from an academic perspective to say this is good or bad, but basically that you are far from the average. So something is happening, whatever it is. And then, so then it's worth basically going and talk to those projects to explore what's going on, basically. What can we learn from each other? And maybe there are, there are bad things happening, but because you don't know from the very beginning, the only thing 
that you can see and notice basically that they are far they are quite far they are outliers from a statistical perspective so then this is the 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 oddities of your uh development ecosystem so that's why i i think it's it's how i um i wanted to frame the, the discussion about good or, or bad we try to avoid this because you you don't really know uh from the very beginning totally understood but mm. the, as i emphasize a couple of times yes yeah, you yeah. need to come up with a story to show the value <laughs> of measurement yes we can rephrase the term <laughs> but the, yeah the point is you need to have a story line it's important why it's important <laughs> yeah for for the for the specific question of the of the value of measuring is uh, again this is my personal experience is first of all is basically to show either and, and it, it depends a lot on the stakeholder mm -hmm. basically this depends on if this is uh, an open source office at the university if this is an open source office in academia uh, sorry in the in a company or if or if this is internal development so depending on the stakeholder the way of measuring success means different things sometimes it's money sometimes it's is uh social benefit sometimes means different things so the very first thing that we do with data is okay this is this is a mirror this is you so by showing data is showing to the person the company the people you have in front of you this is how how you behave and that's it and, and there's no there's nothing else this is you this is this is what data is, is telling you right and then because of this then you have in mind basically either from a company perspective or university perspective or PhD PhD student perspective this is my journey so this is this is the my room for improvement so then by having data driven decisions you can over time basically evolve into that other uh, into that other area so basically metrics are pointing you to where you should be going so going to your question who is i would say the value of having metrics is that you can do data-driven decisions and then you can prove to business needs or community needs or academia needs what you've done basically you can show the delta with metrics yeah so just yes, my couple yeah. of thoughts here <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. yeah sean sounds like maybe daniel uh, spoke some ideas no, I was I was listening to you and listening to Daniel and, and of course listening to Ming. And I think one of the things I, the biggest thing that occurs to me is that there are parts of the open source world like research software is a good example where many projects are critically important. But the notion of building community around them or even the need to have like sustained long term analysis with metrics and isn't as clear in some cases because for a smaller slower moving project i think it's what i'm finding is that a snapshot of where our projects are today and then another snapshot in three or six months after some plans are made and actions are taken that more so than sustained analysis of data because there's nobody to do that in these communities is important and i think that gets back to your earlier question matt about whether or not each of these metrics means the same thing in each context and I, I think in the case of scientific software in particular the the context is different enough that the data we gather how we drive decision making through data i think will be more idiosyncratic and perhaps uh, for lack of a better word retail than a purely data scientific effort totally agree so let me ask so clearly um this presentation has sparked interest and i think uh people are connecting with the presentation because they're asking <laughs> very pointed questions, which is, that's a good thing. Um, so, you know, Ming, what is your, you know, what's your hope kind of with this, with this framework? Um, you know, where, where do you want to go with this? How do you see a connection with the chaos project? You know, like what, what are your hopes? Well, we have, we adopted uh, some metrics what we had insights derived from chaos community and the metrics. And uh, we would expect uh, this kind of a framework can get into, you know, can reach a, a agreement across the community 
yeah, somehow, someday, it can become extended, a joint effort. So for us, yeah, we, we may adopt this kind of a framework to evaluate. I mean, of course, there are so many, so many complexity in the implementation, but uh, I believe you guys can help come with a very practical implementation based on a standard. That's all. Can I make myself clear? Yeah, no, that, that is clear. You know, I, I think, um, well, Sean or Daniel or Georg, do you have comments on that? I mean, Thank am you, I, Sean. Okay. Am I understanding correctly that, that one of the things you're trying to help to motivate or explain or study are are some of the when you said standards i just are we are you interested in the iso standards that we're building in the of context course, of what you're doing? okay all right so i, I thought <laughs> that i just i didn't want to make a, a, an assumption and okay. and so based on, based on that i think what i what i hear you doing is when it comes to these standards and the iso standards are generally thought of as quality standards even though quality right is this broad umbrella of many different things the measurement part of the quality standard I think is what, I mean, it's not the only thing your presentation assists with, but I think it, I think what you've, what you've talked about aids us in the, the data management and driven component of the evaluation of these standards, that that might be how I can think about it. Correct. It, okay. Yeah. 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 That would be awesome. I mean, yeah. And Matt, you're because right. It, that, yeah. Matt, you're right. The data ISO standards can also be definitional. I suspect, however, from the discussions that Yahui and uh, Ming and Daniel and I had in Beijing, mm -hmm. that one of the appeals of the standards is this backend verifiability with some kind of data, whether it's process data or other data. That mm -hmm. that that is a component of how. Chinese companies and other companies that follow ISO standards are thinking about the value proposition for them. Mm -hmm. and Yahui or Ming, correct me if I'm getting that wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Okay. Okay. So I'm done. My, my, my only extra thought here would be, uh, and this was part of my homework for today, um, if going, so what I wanted to have in mind is what what I mean who he said is there is a really complex world out there. So uh, what I'm looking at is okay, let's let's have a view, an overview of whatever we can see out there, and then try to have a minimum set of common attributes that we are interested in, both of us, I mean both of us, all of us, that should be part of this standard at some point. So mm -hmm. um, and so last uh, last time when we um, uh, when we had the last meeting, so Yehui was presenting this mind map from Rikia on, on, on the uh, different areas that we should be measuring. Um, so we, we opened this conversation on, but there might be others, right? So it was part of my work basically to, to do that. Um, so uh, just really quick, uh, uh, can I share my screen? Yeah. yeah. Let stop? me stop my, okay. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, so really quick here um, is uh, uh, where are you? Um, oh here, okay, I can find it. Um, so if you check this link, um, you make it a little bit bigger, Daniel. Yes, at least me... the table is a little hard to read. That's all. Yes, uh, in reality, I wanted. Uh, let me insert this in the chat because then you can go directly to the to the okay. table. Uh, this is open access paper. So this table, this this paper is referencing uh, basically. So my goal here, just to be clear, is where is the place where we can have a wide overview of the whole open source health quality analysis ecosystem, like a really you know uh, systematic uh, review or so. I found this paper that I'm I, you have now in the chat that you can open. You will open directly that table. Basically, there are like 17, 18 
different quality models that are focused on open source. With uh, So these are all of the headers here on the top. And then you have all of the different areas that they are taking care of, right? So product quality, community required quality characteristics and other areas. So there are uh, at least 10 of these uh, quality models, QSOS, OpenVRR, Qualos, and others that are basically mentioning or taking care of community related quality attributes, maintenance capacity, sustainability, process maturity, which is a way of saying, uh, of aggregating all the different uh, meanings or uh, attributes that these this frameworks are using. And then all the X here, basically you can see that there is, for instance, in QSOS, uh, they are not taking care of anything related to community, but for, for instance, Qualos, they take care of, or they mention maintenance capacity, sustainability, process maturity. So basically there are uh, like at least 10 references we should be having a look at and say, okay, these people already discuss about quality in community, specifically for open source projects. So then this is bringing like a, whole new bunch of ways of defining this, what we are discussing today. And then once we all have this clear, then it's where I think we, we will be at, up to the stage from an ISO standard to say, okay, we now have a full understanding of the whole body of knowledge. Now let's di discuss about what makes sense within chaos as a standard. So that's, that was my homework. So just, this is a presentation of a quick summary of this. Good job on your homework, Daniel. Um, so, <laughs> so paper are, looks interesting. Are you um, at a at a broad level, um, Daniel? Are you suggesting the table that you shared would somehow like merge with what Ming had just shown as well? Oh yes, absolutely. Okay, so, but there's uh, a... it, it's basically it's about growing our whole body of knowledge. Okay, so this is this is. All we know about um, community quality in open source, and then with whatever attributes we say are the right ones, we go with that for the standard. Okay, so as an example, um, like if I was to share my screen here, so as an example, just picking one randomly, like we have reliability. Wait, what is this ISO 25.0? What is that? Do you know what that? Row is. I think this is this is a software quality. Uh, I I know quality. I know this a little bit. This software quality, yeah. Okay. And so, did you are these characteristics of that standard? Yeah, I I, I think actually in our from framework, if we get into details, we will see this metrics because remember we have three yes. aspects. Yeah community software value so for software software quality we will consider software as a also standard yep. i mean for sure yeah we will see what uh, needs to be added but uh, if this is established the standard that we can consider we will differently adopt it okay <laughs> So the idea would be to essentially, whatever, pick a row in this case, yeah. which would be reliability and say, if we were to look at what Yahui shared last time, kind of this, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty sure you're familiar. That's that's what you're talking about. Um, so how in that case, for example, reliability is captured in a model? For example, for software artifact, I think, see, software quality. Yeah, so yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. captured. And I think to Daniel's point, like, there are, I think, Daniel, correct me if I'm wrong, there may be rows in this table that are not effectively captured mm -hmm. in this mind map. And if yeah. they aren't captured, what, what it needs to change in the model to accommodate that particular role. I'm, yeah. I think I'm oversimplifying it a little bit, but that's kind of how I understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. Okay. It, it's basically about matching all the all the knowledge that we all have here and say, okay, what is what makes sense now to go together? It's like we are finding like our min minimum viable body of knowledge. Yep. So we go together with that. 
And I think this, okay, this is making sense. And then if I just stuck with the quality component, or wait, if I stuck with, um, where was it? Was it reliability? What was the one I yeah. picked? Hmm. Low level, low level after software quality, because this framework is not completed yet. Okay. And it's gotcha. not even consistent. Got you, got you, got you. <laughs> and what this would do is if reliability was to hang off of yeah, yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah. It would uh -huh. also that is the idea. Uh -huh. It would give you, to Daniel's point, a series of references mm -hmm. that say this is this is why it needs to be there. There are quality models that have been produced mm -hmm. that indicate this is a critical component when understanding the health, whatever, however the words come out. But um, so it gives kind of empirical backing to each one of the ends of the lines, basically, as to why it needs to be there. Yeah, or maybe we need to create new ones. Yes, exactly. Uh, another another new branch or, yep. Um, yep. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, makes sense, makes a lot of sense to me. Um, so if if we were to, take this model and this table and smush them together <laughs> in a way that, you know, you hold them up to the light. Um, how do we want to do this? Ming, is this something that you're currently working on? And maybe this is helpful. This, this, yeah, this whole framework needs to be reconstructed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's I, a lot, uh, yeah, it's a lot of consistent. It's I, still not consistent. I mean, the terms and the terms are still yeah. very zoned and a lot consistent. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a lot a, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so this is-, so this uh, is this I, I totally is support on this. So uh, like, like Matthew, you just mentioned, maybe we can, you know, smash this table and together with our framework, we can make them together. That's why we be doing the, uh, academic research work, uh, you know, not, not only by Minghui, but also could by other professors together, I think. Mm -hmm. So where, that's fine. Um, where do you want to do this work? Do you want to do, do you want to do it in this meeting? <laughs> it's very late for all of you. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> yeah, it requires a lot of work. <laughs> okay, so maybe in that case, I mean, it sounds like you and, and potentially the students that you're working with could look at how these might go together and then you could bring that back and we could discuss. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. We're still yeah, conducting the literature review and uh, think about how to put things, all things together in yeah, cons okay. a consistent fashion. Uh -huh. Okay, that sounds great. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Yeah, very helpful. You can go to bed now. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ming. Hi, thank guys. You. See you next time. Thank you. Yeah, you are very inspiring. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, see you next time. Okay, see you next time. See you next meeting. Mm, see you next meeting. Seriously. <laughs> bye. Thanks. Okay, bye. bye. Uh, I mean, you can stick around if you want. We're just we have a few more things to talk about. But um, was there was this also you, Daniel? Oh yes, it's uh, it's just an example because I was involved in Qualos. I was, I mean, I, I was involved in producing these specifically. Again, this is just an example of the quality model focused okay. on open source, and that's okay. it. So it's just an example of how to express different things from an open source perspective, okay. which is simply slightly different from the mind map. Presented by uh, Ming Hui and, and okay. Rui Kiao and, and Wen Hao. So that depends a lot on. It's more about, again, it's more like the, uh, this colors discussion and the pattern. Like, I like more the green, I like more the red. So then it's, we need to probably agree on the on the basics. And perhaps just only one question I have yeah. for all of you is going to the mind map. If, if we want to first focus on just community, 
because this is community health analytics and perhaps leave for later software artifact or value that might be part of the software quality existing standards or we want to expand through these other areas that, that's an open question i have in my mind i don't have an answer but uh... um i think from a from a process perspective if we're going to do the like the iso standards with the lf you know through the mm, joint development foundation i think we could have the conversation just having a part of it complete mm -hmm. Like it would give us an opportunity to think about what metrics and metrics models speak to those things. So I don't think we have to have the entirety of it complete before we begin the conversations with folks like Jory. Okay. Yeah, this this is what I have in mind, like starting a small and producing something a small but but meaningful. Where well, we I think Yeah. I mean, we should probably pick something, honestly, from a process perspective of creating the standards, something that we are most comfortable with because there's going to be a lot of learning for us just in terms of how to write the standards, how to get them through the, I've never done it, and how to get them through the process. So, so before we do 20 or 25 all at once, it's probably smart. Do one. Yeah, it's probably smart for us just to do a couple, one or two that kind of just, you know, maybe just the top part of this model right here. I, I, yeah, I think the top part is the place to start. I think we should do one. And I like the top part because there's data underneath all of these that's pretty clear, which helps work the whole cycle of uh, process definition through the kind of data checking that Ming was talking about. Some of the other ones like open governance, the data part of it is a little bit more qualitative. Yeah. Yeah, I would go, yeah, same same here. Like my feeling would be activity because most of it is already done in chaos and we can do we can have a quantitative approach. And same probably with collaboration. So collaboration would be pretty similar. Okay. So more or less. Okay. Um I'll oh. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Yui. Yeah, I have one one proposal is that uh, yes, I, I totally agree that uh, we can Usually we first. can start from activity of the governance at community, but uh, I think uh, maybe we can uh, start from, you know, define the three branches first. You know, uh, we have ISO standard proposal and uh, this framework, we would have three branches, main branch. Well, first is community, second is software. First version, we would focus on the community. But we should tell them, except of the community, we also considered uh, uh, software and value already. But that that are you know the next step to do, you know, just to let uh, other people to know mm -hmm, that it may be coming. I I guess one of the things that it'll become clearer when we talk with more closely with folks at the Linux Foundation, like what ISO would like to see in terms of an overall model. Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna, the Open Source Summit North America is in a month. And so I'm gonna have a chance to talk to Jory then. So I should have more information on maybe the size and scope of the model that needs to be brought forward at first. Because she may say, yes, we wanna have community mm -hmm. software and value all at least recognized as part of what you bring forward to ISO. And at the same time, she might say, oh, don't worry about these at the bottom right now. Let's just focus on community. She'll give us the guidance that we need, I think. OK. OK, okay. before that, we will provide more information. OK, now, really, I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> Bye. Uh, sleep well. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I learned <laughs> in the last few minutes. OK. <laughs> all right. yeah, we can keep you up all night if you want. <laughs> so I, I do think, you know, we had a few more things on the agenda, but I think generally speaking, I think we're good. I think this was a really productive conversation. I just don't want to start anything with four minutes to go. So. <laughs> So, okay, uh, sounds like there's some some work that's gonna be done by me and some of the students and we'll come back and continue this conversation. All right. Yeah, it's good. really good conversation. All right, thanks everybody. This was really great. Okay, take care. All right. Bye, Bye. y'all.